There's no secret. I don't know what I'm doing. That's the adventure. We have to stay in motion. That makes us alive. And change is good, so... Now what? Hi, Victoria Rose here. How are you? <laughs> I'm about to have a mental breakdown. <laughs> here in the fancy sunny Los Angeles. Here for one more day. Today's my last day. <laughs> you see a mess behind me that like I need to clean up? Why I know. I have to pack all of this stuff up and get rid of everything I own today. I've been, you know I've been working. You know I have, I have. Let me tell you something. Don't fly Delta. Um, last time when I went to Japan, I bought a one-way ticket and it was fine. I, I booked it via United. This time I booked Delta. I'm, I'm really feisty right now. I haven't slept for like a week, so I don't want to stress you guys out or give you guys anxiety because someone commented that my travel videos and stuff always give me anxiety. I should probably stop doing that, you know, passing out my anxiety. Let me be more calm and rationale about this. So what is going on is that I can't enter the country of Japan even though I booked a ticket tomorrow, I cannot check in online today because I don't have a return ticket to America. If I go in to the airport and try to check in right now, well, when I'm supposed to fly out, they will be like, no, you may not. We deny you. It is good that I know what to do in this situation because the last time I went, I was kind of worried about it. But now that it's coming to fruition, fruition, fruition? How do you say that word? So what this means is that I have to book another ticket outgoing from Japan. I'm not planning on overstaying my stay in Japan. I would never do that. It's just that I don't have the proof right now because I don't know exactly what my plans are, but I'm going somewhere after Japan, but it's not back to America. So I can't book my return ticket back to America because I'm not coming back to America and that's a lot of money to waste. By the way, good news, I got a place. I'll tell you all about that and show it to you. I got a place of my own for a month. A temporary stay in Japan, so we are good on accommodation. I was not able to check in online, and they're like, on the thing, they're like, we can't check you in. You're gonna have to arrive like 10 hours early. And so I called, and I'm like, hey, Delta's not letting me check it online. I kind of know why, but like, I kind of don't know why. Like, I, I need help. Well, I'm sorry, miss, but if you don't have a return ticket, then we will deny you entry. You will get denied entry. I'm like, fuck that. That's not what happened last time, oh, ma'am. Okay, I looked into this matter. I'm like. Yeah, have you? Have you, Dorothy? Tell me. Tell me that I'm gonna get denied. Tell me. Talk to my face, Dorothy. Yes, according to our airline. <laughs> you guys know I don't like to get denied, especially into entry into a country I'm trying to go to because I have no home, Dorothy. What I'm gonna to have to end up doing is buying an outgoing plane ticket to Korea. I heard it's pretty rainy in Japan and they don't have dryers, so I should probably get my laundry done now. This is turning out to be just expensive all around. You guys know, things never work out how they're supposed to. I'm sorry for having um, a, a, a breakdown. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> no, we're getting to Tokyo today on in this vlog. We're getting there, okay? We're going to do it. With my last night in America and everything basically done, I said goodbye to everyone. I was kind of just trying to think about how I felt. And I wasn't sad. It's kind of like starting over, and it's kind of refreshing. So, let's go to the next chapter. Let's just skip the, uh, the, the flight stuff this time. Just wanna make sure that I catch it. All right, I'll see you on the other side, hopefully, maybe. Tokyo. 
I'm going to a sports center right now because I still don't have a gym set up yet, but I have an idea of what I want to do. But that's going to be later on and I'll show you. But for now, I just want to get in a quick workout and then I'm going to move into my new place tomorrow and I'm going to show you guys all of that. Hello Tokyo, goodbye Los Angeles. in a coffee shop but uh, the coffee shop didn't have any internet so it was really difficult it's some really sketchy free internet but but not enough to stay in study so I'm gonna go back and then tomorrow I'm gonna move into my new place so stay tuned for that see you tomorrow Ew. <laughs> good morning Leave put some makeup on his face okay I put on a little bit of makeup my bangs are just crazy right now I'm gonna try not to touch them so much because I keep in my videos I keep touching my hair way too much I think it's like a nervous little thing that I do, especially with bangs because they're never placed right. If you guys have bangs out there, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm going to pack up all my stuff. I've been staying with Haptic for the last couple days since I've arrived, but now my apartment is ready and I'll go through the whole process of how I got an apartment in Japan for a month. It's a little too pricey for me to rent more than a month, but it's the same process with a lot of different apartments. So I'm going to go over that with you in case you wanted to know, but first I'm going to pack everything up again and go and find the place. <laughs> so there's this really steep hill <laughs> we had to take the suitcases down it's quite steep um you lay on two and then i just push you okay and wait at the end okay so what we're gonna do right now is i'm gonna lay in the suitcases and they're gonna roll me down i think that's the best yeah see how steep that is so we have to do that i'm just gonna get on these right now and then up you get. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> let's say hello to haptic again he's here again bonjour so, the thing is I've never seen this place yet. I don't know like I haven't seen it in person They, they left the key in the mailbox. So that's what we're gonna do <laughs> if these fall. It's taking out some people these little school girls <laughs> We're here I'm gonna do the apartment tour in the next video, but I'm gonna go in and see what looks like right now. Okay, so I'm here in my new apartment. I really, really like it, and I'm really excited to do an apartment tour. But I'm gonna go over like everything, like how you get, in, how I got the apartment here, and um, the technical side of living short term in Japan. But so I'm gonna go out and get some groceries now, and then I'm gonna come back and you everything. I need to go full manual with this bitch. There you go. What are you doing? I guess no one I'm recording. Yeah, you have to probably carry it down. Let's go grocery shopping. So just to give perspective, this peach is uh, $4, two for 880 So that's like $8 for two peaches. Potpourri fruit. <laughs> what is that? With the aubergine and a potato and a <laughs> little bit dried out and weird looking, I don't know. Hey, 
groceries. I got this maintenance water. I don't know what it is, so I want to try it right now. Are you sure it's for human consumption? <laughs> Maybe it's for the toilet. <laughs> huh? It was by the toilet? Yeah, it's by the toilet stuff. I'm just kidding. Oh, it's like, it's like lemon. Mm. It's like bleach. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you want to taste it? It's just like, it probably has like some vitamins and lemon in it. I'm going to put all this away and I'm going to put all my suitcase stuff away and then we'll have another chat. <laughs> okay, hello. It's the next day. I'm all settled into my new apartment, which the next video after this, I'm going to do an apartment tour, which I'm really excited about because Japanese apartments are very different than American apartments. So I made a list of technicalities of how to move to Japan temporarily or move to Japan semi-permanently, but not permanently. The easiest way to move to Japan, and I'm not in a doctor's office, I have a muscle chart to study. Uh, really excited about that. Anyways, I brought that with me from America. I also have a look at chart. In order to completely move to a new country, it is a lot more rigorous and a lot more in, a lot harder. But if you're looking to move to a country to where you're okay to like leave every now and, and again, then I'll, sh I'll tell you how I did that. In Los Angeles, my lease was up. I uh, signed a lease with my two other friends and my one friend moved to New York and my other friend moved somewhere cheaper in Los Angeles. So we were all parting ways and I needed to figure out a place that I was gonna go. And I wasn't planning on living in Japan long term or anything like that. It was more just a place because I because haptic is here. And we're close so I'm like, I'll go to, back to Japan because I actually wanted to come back here because I had more things that I wanted to do for videos. I wanted to explore more and then after here, uh, travel somewhere new and different. But for the time being, I'm going to stay here to get everything together, to finish my personal training certificate, just to have a bit of a base. So I'm just going to be here for at least a couple months, um, if not three months. I don't know yet. I'm not planning on like staying here throughout the winter because I don't want to be here through the winter. Let me tell you how I did this and I made a list so hopefully we can get through this. So my lease was up in Los Angeles. We all had to part ways. I sold everything that I owned and I also got sponsorships while I was in Los Angeles and I just was mostly saving money and selling things and working. It was very boring but I saved enough money to where I could buy a plane ticket which is standard flight from Lax Airport to Tokyo is about $600 one way so I got a one-way plane ticket to back to Tokyo and I've been um, to Japan several times I've it's been a year since I first went to Japan and I've been there three different times or more but then I'm like hey I really need my own space and my own place so that's why I got my place now traveling light is the least stressful option don't bring a ton of stuff but if you're going to do a one-way flight some airlines <laughs> Delta are, are kind of strict about not having an outgoing and a return flight. So I had an issue with that. So I found a service um, and it is renting a flight. And this sounds kind of weird, but it's all legal and it all works. Um, you just go on certain sites. They get a flight for you. It's a legit flight. And then you can use those details. If you're questioned, you show them the outgoing flight or you put in your details of an outgoing flight and then you're fine and it's canceled automatically for you and everything and it was only like $22. Another thing that you can do if you don't have a returning flight and they question you or whatever at the airport is you can buy a really cheap flight like for example for Japan you could go to Korea and you could either go to Korea or you could just not but just having that outgoing flight you have to. Uh, you can, the other option is you can get a flight but have it refundable but it's going to be expensive unless you're questioned you're fine um, they just don't want people going in and overstaying their visa which is not what i would be doing but you have to have proof which brings me to visa stuff and passport stuff as an american i can stay in japan for three months other countries i have had to um, get a visa for and it was only like a 30 day stay so before i left i found an apartment here on gaijin pot and this is probably the most Probably what you guys want to know the most. This video is going to be so long. I apologize. I finally wanted a place to myself. You can do a guest house. You can do hostel living or you can do capsule hotels. You can do all that. It depends on the length of the time you're staying. So for a hostel, it's around $15 a night. You have a capsule hotel, which is $20 to $40 a night. I wouldn't want to stay in one like long term because you still like you pay for like a little capsule and you share all the other spaces. 
and a hotel. I don't even know because they're all pretty expensive here. I wouldn't stay in hotels here. And accommodation here is very small. Uh, for an apartment, you can go in Gaijin Pot. There's a lot of different housing places. Housing here goes really quick, so I would suggest pre-planning uh, at least a month or a few weeks beforehand because if you want an actual apartment, you're gonna have to figure a bunch of stuff out before. So I went through a leasing company. I needed to scan in my ID. They did a background check. I had to apply and once I passed the application, then they gave me the contract and I signed the contract and sent that in. And then from there, I had to pay everything up front. So if you're coming here, make sure you save up money or have mobile income. So this apartment that I have right now is around $1,000 a month in rent, which is com very comparable to what I was paying in Los Angeles. Since it's temporary, there is uh, a cleaning fee and there's like the utilities I have to pay too. After this apartment, this one was pricey. I got this last minute and that's why it's more expensive than I wanted to pay, but I wanted to pay around $1,000. That's comparable and even less than what I was paying in Los Angeles for a lease. Rent here can be definitely be a lot cheaper than in Los Angeles, but this is pricey and this comes out to like $1,300, $1,400 a month. I'm only staying here a month. I'm gonna find somewhere cheaper now that I have time because I didn't have time to find one because they were all taken. Like I said, housing here goes really fast. With Gaijapot and with these other services, they also have English speaking, so you can do all this through someone that speaks English. So you can also do guest housing. That's another thing on Gaijapot. You can rent a room in like a guest housing and then share like the kitchen area and bathroom area. For renting a room, it, it, having your own room is probably like eight, around $800, $900, I don't know. Or you can rent a bunk in guest housing. If you're okay with sharing with other people, you can probably do that for five, six hundred dollars for a relatively nice place and it has all the things that you would want to need. You can live there for like months at a time if you wanted to. I didn't really want to do that. I was open to it, but it kind of was comparable to an apartment situation, getting my own room, because I need my own room, because I need to film. <laughs> and the most popular transit is trans transportation. It takes a little bit to learn, but once you learn it, it's really easy. They also have English words um, on the screens in the cabs of the train, so if you just keep a lookout, or you can like remember what it sounds like or you can follow your GPS app and getting around is actually really easy. Another criteria for me is having an apartment close to the train station. So there's a train station like five to eight minutes away from me that I can walk to. For the phone, I still kept my bank account in America and my phone service in America. So I had a base in America. I'm not actually staying here um, to make money or anything. I can't make money while I'm here. If you wanna make money while you're here, you had to get some sort of work visa or something like that. I don't wanna deal with that. So I'm, I work mobily and my income is really, is still in America. Uh, I get very limited service for T-Mobile here, but I can still text and use the map app. Then I have internet here, which is included in rent. You can get a SIM card. It's easy, you can get it at the airport, you can get it at a store when you get here. I don't wanna change my number again because I can still text with T-Mobile. I might just get like a hotspot, a data hotspot because it's annoying trying to like post and use internet because I don't have data. I wouldn't want to mess with getting a bank account or phone number here. I'm not trying to get my citizenship here or anything like that. That's complicated. That's the easiest way. I hope that all made sense. The plan is to travel to Europe after this. Don't feed into all of the hype of places like Los Angeles, not worth all the hype. Tokyo's not, there's nowhere that's worth all the hype. Every place has its pros and cons. Make your own informed decisions. If you have any other questions, leave comments below. I tried to cover things that I would have wanted to know, but I know that I probably missed a ton of things. Stay tuned for the next video, which is going to be a tour of my Japanese apartment. Bye.